Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Um, for me, it was a short trip. Um, I just came from uh, Hamburg yesterday. Um, there was a terrible storm, um, but happily I made it. Um, so today I'm here to present about breaking news detection on um, Wikidata and uh, Wikipedia. So I'm standing in the projector. Is it okay with the camera? Okay, great. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, presenting about breaking news detection with Wikidata and uh, Wikipedia. Um, I'm here with a triple affiliation, actually. Um, you can see the logos, maybe. So the first one is uh, the University Lyon 1, um, where I'm, uh, yeah, where I just uh, have started a postdoc. Um, UPC below from uh, Barcelona, where I have just finished my PhD. And then finally, uh, an internet startup that some of you may have heard of. Um, so yeah, this is the topic of the talk. Um, news detection, news. So where does news happen? Um, obviously in the world out there, but then where does news break? More and more news doesn't break on the news wires, but actually on social networks, or as you can see here on Wikipedia. So some of you um, who work actually at Wikimedia may have uh, bad memories of that day um, when the servers melted down, when uh, people started editing uh, the Michael Jackson article saying, is he dead, is he not dead, is he dead, is he not dead? Um, so terrible day, but um, it was a proof that Wikipedia is actually a very, very important source for news also. And obviously social networks, everybody remembers this picture, I guess, um, this uh, airplane who crashed on the Hudson River. Um, someone was on a ferry, had his phone with him, uh, took a photo and posted it on, uh, on Twitter. And obviously it got uh, a lot of retweets. So this was, I think, the first time really where um, social media were really conceived by the public as an actual valid news source. Um, so this just as an introduction. Um, this obviously led to a lot of research on how can we detect news by looking at social networks. Um, typically this is also called first story detection. Um, a lot of works you can find um, if you do some uh, research. Um, most of it is based on Twitter. So Twitter is just like any other social network, but they have a very open streaming API. So you can just hook into what they call the, the fire hose, the garden hose. Um, so you can kind of get an unfiltered uh, flow of messages and um, can just look at it and make sense out of it. So a lot of people tried this. Um, typically you look at um, yeah, spikes in time, um, locality, text, so sometimes people uh, use the same terms. For example, um, if you uh, want to predict earthquakes, there's a limited number of terms connected with earth earthquakes, so you can make a list of those terms and then just watch do such terms suddenly occur a lot more often than usually, and like that you can say, well, probably there's an earthquake now. Um, there's a very famous XKCD comic on earthquakes and Twitter. Um, use your favorite search engine to find it, it's excellent. Um, so, yeah, what, what is the problem with this uh, kind of approach? You get high recall, but very low precision. So typically you get something like retweet this tweet to win an iPad. So a lot of people will retweet your software detects, whoa, suddenly some tweet is getting very famous and you look at it and it's just, yeah, you know, someone wanted to win an iPad. So um, there's some um, precision problem with that. Um, I've mentioned some of the papers below that um, yeah, talk about this kind of things. Um, I will send around the slides uh, later on, so don't take any notes now, uh, now if you're interested in this stuff. Um, so yeah, there was an obvious precision problem by looking at um, social networks alone. So this led people, um, in this case Petrovich and uh, Osborne, to using Wikipedia as a yeah, valid um, source because the page view logs of Wikipedia are open. So everybody can just go to this URL and download the page view logs and like that do basically the same um, that they've done before, looking at so, uh, certain spikes is one article suddenly more popular than, than it used to be in the past? And like that, they can try to relate um, yeah, things that they detect on social networks and see if there's something connected to Twitter. So 
Indeed, um, Osborne and um, his colleagues have shown that there is some relation between Wikipedia activity and uh, social network activity. Um, so what they did is, yeah, they used social networks, detected something, and tried to map is there something um, related on Wikipedia. Their key findings were typically Wikipedia lags behind two hours. Um, that's not too good if you think breaking news, but also think of the problem of uh, downloading the page view logs. So this is also something uh, in the first uh, place, Wikimedia makes them available um, on an hourly basis. This is super, but if you want real time, one hour is just not good enough. And then it's a big file, so it also takes just some time to just download it. Um, so this is partly where the two hours came from. Um, this as a yeah, introduction at, uh, to the overall topic. Um, so then um, I saw a tool from Ed Summers um, from the Library of Congress um, who had written something that hooked into the IRC stream of recent changes of uh, Wikipedia's and just showed that. And I had the idea, well, there could be done something more than just showing that data. There could be something useful actually in there. Um, so you, here you can see a screenshot of uh, an IRC application and uh, I'm connected to two channels here. Um, you can see how all the recent changes flow in. Um, if you've never seen this, um, it's super interesting. Um, the URL is here on the slides. A again, I will share the slides afterwards so you can look at them. Um, and you can see yeah, how fast Wikipedia gets edited just by looking at the IRC streams. Um, so then we built a system called Wikipedia Live Monitor um, that was published in a paper, again the mention is down here, um, that hooked into all those different um, IRC channels for uh, recent changes. And those channels all follow one pattern as the name, language.project. So um, for example, de.wikipedia, but then also wikidata.wikipedia. So, Wikidata has its own IRC recent changes channel. Um, so here they're treating Wikidata just like any other language. And um, later on we will see that I will do exactly the same. So the core idea is um, when an article gets edited, um, we're pulling in all the same articles in different languages on the same uh, subject. So for example, if you have uh, the English article on Albert Einstein, um, you can use the Wikipedia API to then get all the other representations. So for example, the uh, German article on Albert Einstein. Um, so yeah, this for uh, that. Um, and then we came up with what we call breaking news conditions. So you have all these different clusters of articles and then you need to do something with them. So um, we did um, some evaluation and looked at the data and um, we came up with uh, four overall breaking news conditions. So the first one is um, an article cluster has to have at least five occurrences. So at least five people need to edit um, an article, not necessarily different people, but an article in one cluster needs to be edited at least five times. Um, in between those edits, there should be no more than one minute. Um, and then there must be at least two independent different editors. So this is um, very important so that not just one editor can um, um, yeah can cause your uh, signals to to uh, to explode but it should be two independent editors and then finally um, because this is an ongoing system at some uh, place you need to do garbage collection so throw out article clusters that no longer get edited um, so here we have 240 seconds um, as a good measure so how does the system look like? I will show uh, a live demo, hopefully, if the internet is working uh, later on. So it looks like that, basically. It has different sections. I will show that later on. Um, and what is quite nice also, it has a Twitter account. So you can follow WikiLiveMon on Twitter and then um, get breaking news alerts as they happen or as they are detected on uh, Wikipedia and uh, Wikidata, obviously. Um, so feedback, how does that work? Um, we got really great feedback. Um, so for example, there was one uh, journalist from US News. Um, his tweet said, for the record, Boston Marathon showed up on Wikitool about 10 minutes after the first tweets. So you can see it's really um, very uh, close to actually when the sad event in that case happened. Um, someone from The Guardian said, um, it's a, yeah, 
good tool for uh, for uh, the newsrooms and so on. Um, but then this talk is about how we fitted Wikidata into it. So before I said um, the Wikipedia people or Wikimedia people um, who run the IRC servers um, treat Wikidata just like uh, any other language. So we do essentially the same. We just connect to Wikidata, wikidata.wikipedia. And then um, in the code, we have very, very few places like that where we have if language equals Wikidata, then do that, else do this. But besides that, um, it's really very or re relatively easy um, to abstract away the fact that Wikidata is actually, um, well, Wikidata and not a Wikipedia for human beings. So you can see small differences here. So if you want to get the diff URL, obviously you have to use wikidata.org instead of wikipedia.org. And then some more subtle differences. Um, if you look at um, getting all the language versions of an article, um, here in the Wikidata API, you have to use Wikidata, of course. And then the action is um, Wikibase get entities you want for the properties to cite links. And uh, on the Wikipedia API, um, you ha the action is query, um, and you're interested in the lang, link lang links and so on. But besides that, the results that you get back are more or less is, uh, exactly the same. So some small differences instead of using um, yeah, different, um, uh, yeah, by, by you have to use different APIs. Um, and then the evaluation. So does Wikidata add any value to it? And um, the honest response is Wikidata is no primary source um, for breaking news, which kind of makes sense because people tend to write articles first and then um, update the facts. So typically when something happens, say someone dies, the first thing people will do is um, they change, um, I don't know, Michael Jackson is A to Michael Jackson was A. And then uh, iteratively over time, they update the info boxes, they remove, say, the category living people from Michael Jackson, and so on. And then uh, later on, they will change stuff uh, on Wikidata. But um, what is very interesting, and this is uh, ongoing research at the moment um, by, um, yeah, by uh, myself, um, Wikidata is about 96% edited by bots. So this is very impressive. Um, there is a tool that um, uh, I have uh, released as open source that I will show later on. Um, it will give you some feeling about um, yeah, how Wikipedia and Wikidata are edited by bots versus Wikipedia. And so it's a kind of playful name. Um, of course, bots are useful, but if you present it like a competition, bots versus um, Wikipedians, uh, I thought it was fun. So globally, looking at all Wikipedia, so really all Wikipedias from the really big ones to the ones that have just one article. Um, and I ran that analysis uh, for the whole night, um, monitoring yeah, 170,000 edits um, last night. 63% was edited by um, human be uh, sorry, by bots. 63% edited by bots. Um, on Wikidata alone, 96% edited by bots. And now um, you need to be careful a bit with the numbers um, because Wikidata had overall 130,000 edits. And remember, overall, there were um, 170,000. So Wikidata is really, really a huge, huge, huge um, bot uh, edited um, entity in the whole uh, Wikipedia, Wikidata world. Um, so later on in the, in the tool that I've uh, told you about, um, I will show you how that uh, has an impact. So let me quickly show you uh, these, um, these statistics. Let's see if we can get that full screen. All right, so um, this is uh, the tool bots versus Wikipedians where you can see who edits more. So this is really about uh, quantity, not quality. And you can see now, um, I've just restarted it. It's, it has only 5,000 or so uh, edits monitored. But it is ongoing, it's running. So you can see the numbers are uh, changing. And now globally, it's about 47% edited by bots. But the longer you let it run, the more uh, the bots gain weight. And um, yeah, you can see here all the different uh, Wikipedias. And I can switch off Wikidata. And now you should take a look at this uh, slider. 
um, when I switch off Wikidata so that it does no longer consider with Wikidata, you can see it has made, made a big jump to the side of the human beings. So if you don't consider Wikidata on Wikipedia, still humans win. Yeah, so it's 19% only edited by bots and 80% um, edited by, um, by, uh, by human beings. Um, I did some more analysis to see how about logged in users versus anonymous, anonymous users. Um, you can also see here, um, now the numbers of, uh, are obviously not uh, representative because the internet connection just broke down. Um, we saw this with a previous uh, presenter, so uh, the tool had to be restarted. But um, you're invited to uh, try this out at home and um, yeah, run some monitoring on your own. And you can see um, the different Wikipedias also here. Um, overall, about yeah, one, one quarter of the edits are made by uh, anonymous users. And then um, I've just added this yesterday. Um, I've added a bot counter. So what bots are out there and what do they do and in what language do they edit? Again, it's uh, not representative at the moment because it's just too few edits. But um, yesterday when I had run it for the whole night, it was about 80, 90 bots. Um, and really most of them active on Wikidata. So again, let's turn on Wikidata again because for the bots, obviously, this is interesting statistics. So now you can see it's 39, already a lot more. And if you look at the languages, um, really, most of them are only active on, on Wikidata. And some of them do um, yeah, some uh, curation on the other um, Wikipedias. But really, most bot, bot activities is um, on uh, Wikidata. Right. So um, this tool is open source, so everybody can use it. Um, you're very, very much invited to play with it. Um, and then, finally, this is Wikipedia Live Monitor. Um, now using uh, Wikidata as well as, a, as an input source. Um, so let's um, have a look what is going on. Um, so this pane is um, for articles that get edited right now. And you can see it's really super fast, super rapid. Um, there's a lot of activity, obviously. Um, and then whenever two articles get edited more or less at the same time, I'm merging them, so I'm putting them in the same cluster. So you can see here the English article on the French Basque Country was, was just merged with uh, Strana Baskov, something like this. Yuri, am I pronouncing this correctly? Yeah. More or less. So <laughs> it's uh, the uh, Russian article on the same topic. Um, and then you can see here, these are article clusters that are repeatedly edited, so these are kind of slowly coming upwards, but they're not um, breaking news yet, because you can see here um, the breaking news conditions. Some of them, or in this case, all of them are not fulfilled. Here we have simply um, people edit uh, the article over time. You can see a lot of metadata, like who made the changes, when, uh, what editors were active, and so on, and what languages. And then finally, at the very bottom, so I know the layout is not optimal um, because the important stuff is below the fold, um, you can see the uh, breaking news uh, events that are reported. So in this case, something is going on with someone called Bruno Metsu. I'm not sure who this is. Um, sorry? Okay, so this is very typical for, um, yeah, popular figures who die, they make it immediately on Wikipedia. Uh, just before, unfortunately, um, I had to also restart this application. There was um, a new bridge going over, I think, the Bosporus that was uh, inaugurated today. So also something that was super uh, popular on Wikipedia, but very much only on the Turkish Wikipedia, obviously, with very few edits in English and uh, I think something else. Um, so you can see already by just looking at this sort of um, yeah, news here. Um, it's typically stuff on Wikipedia that also gets um, active on uh, ac activity on uh, social networks, and um, yeah, it's it's really yeah. So before um, with the Bosporus Bridge, um, it was the name M A. I don't remember. So um, yeah, um, a very uh, famous bridge, it was really a lot of uh, social network activity. And the main idea here is obviously sometimes you see something 
that is trending on Wikipedia, but you don't really understand what is going on. And uh, typically in tweets, people have to, by pure definition, um, write very short sentences so you can learn someone has died, for example. Um, you can see in this example it's only Twitter, but um, the application also monitors Facebook and uh, Google+. Plus. So um, Twitter is typically the most active, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it has hooks into all three social networks APIs. Um, so this brings me back to my final slide, which is basically just the thank you slide. Um, if you want to see these slides again, they are at bit.ly slash smwconf. Uh, sorry if I name grabbed the name, but um, <laughs> it was free, so I took it. Um, and then Wikipedia Live Monitor is available at wikipedia-irc.herokuapp.com and uh, the statistics application, bots versus Wikipedians, wikipedia-edits.herokuapp.com. Um, I've added my contact information, um, but obviously I'm also around here, so if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them right now. Thanks for listening so far. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Hi. Uh, well, let me ask the obvious question, which is, in what ways could Google use this information? Uh, and maybe more general, if you want to talk about Google and Wikidata, but I don't know if there's enough time for that. Um, so obviously Google is using a lot of Wikipedia data, a lot of Wikidata data also. Um, Danny now is a Googler. Um, so yeah, obviously there is a lot of interest in this sort of things. Um, so sometimes I, just for the fun of it, when my system reports something, I look at the knowledge graph system and see, see for example, that someone has died. The knowledge graph doesn't know it yet. Um, my system knows it already. But then the thing is, um, if you expose something to millions of users um, as, a, as a knowledge graph panel, you obviously want to be sure that you don't report, I don't know, someone has died when this person hasn't died, um, just as, a, as an example. Um, for Google News, obviously we use a lot of news sources, like all the um, yeah, different newspapers that we have uh, yeah, agreements with. Um, but we're also looking at logs of, of page views, obviously, uh, and search logs. Um, but yeah, at this point, this is a research project. So this is not yet in production. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it will ever be in production, but yeah, it's a research project that I've been working on. Um, but yeah, there is interest in Wikipedia and Wikidata. Um, if this answers the question, yeah, I mean. Oops. Okay, uh, another questions? Uh, yeah. Um. What you, uh, so uh, I, uh, I guess. The white shirt. Where, where, where? Ah. Uh, wh why did you uh, write it in uh, in JavaScript? Oh, because it's the most awesome language ever. Uh, <laughs> so no, the the story is um, behind the IRC channels. There is some system that con that converts uh, those IRC messages into something useful, and this is. Um, actually, what I can show to you um, in this application, um, I'm also publishing an API that I'm inviting everyone to use. So if you go to this application and go to the very top, there's a link. And if you look at it, you can see a lot of text. So this is essentially um, the Wikipedia streaming API that I'm making available publicly that is based on all those different IRC feeds. Um, in JavaScript, it's very comfortable to just work with um, events. So you can, yeah, it's maybe too small, so let me make it a little bit bigger. You can see here, so this is moving all the time. So it's a, it's a growing page that grows, 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 grows. So it's really a streaming API, right? Um, so if you have a look at it, um, it is a, a structured textual format, um, event, colon, an L edit, edit, so this is an edit event for the Dutch Wikipedia, and then you can see the data, it's just a big uh, JSON thing. Um, so then 
in um, JavaScript, you can subscribe to events and you can say something uh, on an L edit event, do something. So that's the question, uh, that's a response to the question. And also everybody so should do JavaScript. It's <laughs> just <laughs> so much fun. Um, in the very back. Uh, okay, the last question for this presenter. Uh, yeah, it's a combined question and comment, I think. That uh, Have you looked into, uh, when we're talking about JavaScript, have you look I looked into using this NoFlow library, which is a flow-based programming uh, library written in uh, CoffeeScript, actually, but yeah, that's JavaScript in a way. That yeah. It's very modular and it seems to, to be very suited for this streaming uh, processing approach where you want to do ha have a modular approach? Um, so the short answer is no. Um, the longer answer is um, in the back end, this hooks into IRC channels, takes those IRC messages and converts them into this very simple format that then on the client side, you can work with by simply subscribing to events. Um, I think using any kind of library here would be overkill because it, there's just no added value. If you look at the source code, it's super simple. You just subscribe to messages um, on an L edit, on whatever edit, and then you can get um, yeah, your logic running. But yeah, um, I'm interested simply if you want to point it uh, to me and can have a look, but yeah, not for this project, I would say. Thank you again. <laughs>